welcome to Word Time. This is Coach Shelby with Coach for Christ World Ministry, and I want to bring you another dream, as I promised last week. We'll be doing this as the Lord allows from week to week, and this dream was in December of 2015. I actually preached a sermon on this sometime past, if you want to check on SoundCloud, called Give Me a Drink. And in this situation, or in this dream, what had happened is I was out in a large field, I can't say whether I was with the church or the gathering or the body or, or what the case would be there. But as we were in the field, I had perceived that there was a young boy who had been buried alive somewhere on this field. And of course, in the dream, I knew exactly where to go to see this. This boy had been buried by this group of people. This was a good group of people by the world standards. And I began to separate from the group, the church, if, if that's indeed what it was or who they were. And I began to walk to see where this boy had been laid to rest, though he was alive. He was a handicapped boy. Listen to me. He was handicapped. And I need to preface this and probably should have done that as I was going through a time, a lot of things going on, the, the testings and the trials that our Lord Jesus Christ promised us would come against those who walk with him. You see, that's one of the evidences of being a true believer, true Christian. Jesus said, you will be persecuted for my name's sake. He said, they hated me they'll hate you. He said that I did not come to bring peace, but to bring a sword. He said the enemies will be those of your own household. It wasn't God's desire and his best for us to fight against one another. But the fact of the matter is that when you stand for the word of God, even those closest to you, for those are the ones who will hurt you the greatest, will turn on you. That's the word of God. Now, if you have a situation that's not like that, then I challenge you to continue standing for the word of God. And I hope that all of your families in love with Jesus Christ, that's certainly God's best. That's what he wants for you. But in many cases, that's not the situation, nor is that what the scripture says. So I was struggling with presenting the gospel. I, I wasn't to present the gospel. I said, should I continue uh, recording on SoundCloud? I'm encouraging you to, to look up Coach for Christ to get the SoundCloud app. Uh, we do that weekly with gatherings as well as uh, me ministering as the Lord leads. Uh, the body is not handicapped. There are people out there that have gifts that need to be contributing instead of just sitting in a pew. Praise God. Come on now. But I was struggling whether I should continue recording once a week. And the Lord had given me a dream, as he so often does, testing that dream, believing it is from the Lord, for it does line up with scripture. The name of this dream and that sermon that I preached in December of 2015 was give me a drink. And I was in that field, as I said, I separated from the body, whoever that body was, and I began to walk to where this young boy was buried. Amen. Now he had been buried there for a long period of time. So uh, in natural understanding, he couldn't possibly be alive being buried six foot under. But as I began to get closer, this small boy, I realized that he had grown to full manhood. I actually believe I saw the legs coming out of the ground, which was strange being six foot under. So he had grown to manhood. And I'm thinking, how can this man, how can he grow? He was buried alive, nothing to eat, nothing to drink. They left him for dead. They put him in the ground to do away with him, to keep him away. This handicapped boy that this body was not willing to deal with. And again, I'm struggling at this time of my life is should I continue to record? Should I do this? Should I not? Does it make any difference, Lord? And as I walked up to where the head would be buried six foot under, I saw a slot where the tombstone would be. And that slot, I could not see down in there, but the words that came out rocked my soul. And he said, give me water, give me a drink. And I woke up from this dream and the Lord impressed upon my heart, upon my soul, that this was the answer. See, it's not how many here. It's not how many are saved. It's not how many are converted. It's not how many notches you put in your belt. The Bible says preach the gospel. And I remember that one time the Lord said preach the gospel to such a degree that even in their hour of death, they may repent and be saved. So in this dream, the Lord was showing me that there are people that are dying. There are people that have been left for dead. That even, and let me say this, forgive me for saying this, if, if you're not one of these, but the so-called self-diagnosed body of Christ is leaving for dead because they have nothing to offer. We've handicapped the body with our religious ideology. We've handicapped the body with, with our psychological, humanistic psychology programs, with our 12 steps and all this stuff, which can in their own right, according to the word of God, be right. But if our faith is backwards, it does not work. Man was intended to live from inside out, from the spirit, 
where our spirit is joint heirs with Jesus that would infect our soul and change our mind, will, and emotion, and our body would manifest the fruit of that that is happening inside. We were never intended to change ourselves from outside in, for it's not possible, for God will not glory in your flesh. So we've handicapped the body by religion. Man-made programs have handicapped the body, and when we it don't work, which it never does, then we want to get the folks away from us. We want to bury them. We want to put them deep in the ground where they can never get back because they are the very evidence of our failure and our lack of desire to come near to God and to be led by the Holy Spirit. If you didn't hear what I just said, you need to go back and listen again. It was Galatians 2.21 that says, don't frustrate. I do not. Listen, I'm going to personalize this. I do not frustrate the grace of God. I don't use grace as a badge. For if righteousness, my right standing with God, comes by the law. Now, let me interject Coach for Christ commentary. The law is anything that is made by man to make yourself right with God. It is by faith in Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross by the power of the Holy Spirit that makes you right with God. It's the gift of God, and yet God, according to Romans 12, 3, even gave you the faith, the faith you need to believe upon his son, Jesus Christ. And to believe is an action word. There's evidence that come from believing. Did you hear what I said? For I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness, my right standing with God, come by the law. It certainly doesn't come by the law, but the law shows you that you're guilty and you're in need of a Savior. But also the laws that are added in, that are made by man, the programs, the denominational laws, the things that we tell people to do, instead of just putting your faith in Christ and Christ to Him alone. Because by faith in Christ alone, the power of the Holy Ghost will move you, will set you free. But what we do is our programs don't work, and so we want to bury the problem. But the problem exists within the very one creating the problem. And this man had grown to full size and he said, give me a drink. It reminds me of the word of God in John chapter 7. And it says, in the last days, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink. I am the living water. I am the living water. Any man who thirsts, let him come to me and get a drink and he shall never thirst again. Let the spirit of God, but watch this, in 738 of the book of John, it says, he that believes on me, I said, he that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. It is the rivers of living water that flow from inside out because the connection is in the spirit realm. It's never in the mind, the earthly mind, the carnal mind that is at enmity against God. It is not in the flesh for God does not glory in your flesh, but it is in the spirit. When we had our gathering yesterday, we talked about sacrifice. And obedience is true better than sacrifice in the book of 1 Samuel 15. But if you're obedient, you will sacrifice. Romans 12, 1 says, I lay my body on the altar of God as a living sacrifice. You must come near to God, according to James chapter 7, verses, I'm sorry, James chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Submit to God. It is a decision in your mind to submit to God. When you submit, the power of the Holy Spirit will move. And submission to God is faith in the Son, Jesus Christ, and what he did at the cross. It is walking in repentance. No repentance, no salvation. To turn from your wicked ways and your sin. Not using grace as a badge to continue in your filth, but eternally being changed inside out. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. I said old things pass away and all things become new. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus because I walk according to the Spirit of God. The Bible says, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Give me a drink. The Lord is telling some of you listening right now, it's time for you to stand in your home. It's time for you to give your children a drink. Some of them can't give themselves a drink. You've been ordained. You, you, are the, you are the man of God or the woman of God in your home, and it is time to open up the word of God, the manna from heaven, the bread of life, and start feeding your children. Why would we feed our children earthly things that knowing that these, all these things are going to burn and perish? But eternal life is in the word of God, and the word of God has a name. His name is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Son of God, slain before the foundation of the world. Put your trust and faith here. Give me a drink. Speak the word of God. This is the living water. This is the word of God. This is God's heart. Put This is just ink and paper. But this word becomes alive when your faith is in Jesus Christ and him crucified. By the power of the Holy Ghost, 
I pray the Spirit of God move upon you and you begin to give folks a drink and you will stop holding back, but you will lay your body down that the Spirit of God may fill you up to overflow and then you may go and give those a drink that God has assigned you to. Yeah.